Our mission is to go ahead and get our education, prevention, and awareness out of HIV with Aboriginal people. Our mandate is to teach and support our people in the prevention of HIV AIDS in the manner that is respectful of our native ways of life, and we are guided on this mission by the people we help. We are also mandated by the chiefs of the 31 First Nations communities that we work with. Our vision is to one day is to uh, work ourselves out of a job so that our prevention, awareness, and education is no longer needed. Um, I don't see it happening soon. I wish it would. <laughs> uh, with our people's traditional wisdoms, values, and connect us to each other, our journey with HIV teaches us that healing will strengthen our nations, our communities, our families, and ourselves. So with Healing Our Nation's philosophy, what we use is HIV is used as a teacher and it's we view HIV as a teacher. It's an opportunity for us to talk about sex and sexuality in a healthy way and in a non-threatening way as well. It's an opportunity for us to learn together from the people that we do teach and from other organizations. And families should be able to talk about HIV freely and openly, just like any other topic. I know that in my house with my children, I mean, my kids are only seven and five, but they already know what condoms are and they already can talk about sexuality and I think it's just going to allow them to have a healthier sexuality when they get older. So this is something that Healing Our Nations would like to bring to every family and just so that it is more open and that we can have a better conversation around healthy sexuality. Community within a community, it's that um, within our Aboriginal communities there are many communities. There are our on reserve and our off reserve. We have <coughs> our separate communities but we're all a community of the First Nations community. Our traditional ways, uh, we have seven gifts that were given to us by the Creator. That would be respect, truth, honesty, humility, compassion, wisdom, and unconditional love. And unconditional love is very, very important. APHA inclusion, um, it's at the top of the list for us. Our APHAs are the most important aspect of our work. And we, are, we have two members who do sit on our board of Healing Our Nations and actually one of them is uh, one of the chair positions in our board. We use our, this is our medicine wheel. You'll probably see it in many different forms. It can be used for many, many different teachings. Um, the medicine wheel can be thought as of Aboriginal teachings, or circle, sorry. It's called a wheel because it re revolves endlessly. Um, it's like the movement in the cycles of life. The HIV HIV AIDS wheel provides a reminder and opportunity for healthcare professionals, PHAs or APHAs, their family members and others to recognize the emotional, spiritual and social aspects that influence and are, and are influenced by this disease. And it begins with the beginning stages, you'll see there that um, everything within our Aboriginal culture, we always begin in the east as that's where the sun rises, that's the beginning of the day. So we start everything within the east at the child stage which would be the beginning of the HIV um, progression, the window period. And then we would go on to our youth, and the, our youth stage would be the asymptomatic stage. And then the adult stage would be the symptomatic stage. And then our elder stage, which would be the AIDS stage. In Canada, Aboriginal people are significantly overrepresented represented by, for both HIV AIDS and the AIDS epidemic is an unprecedented crisis that poses a serious threat to current and future generations. In 2005, the distribution of HIV exposure categories among newly infected Aboriginal people were primarily injection drug use. I know a lot of, and you'll see in Ontario that it's heterosexual sex, but within our Aboriginal communities, injection drug use is one of the highest risk factors for contracting the HIV virus. Overall, the HIV infection rate for Aboriginal people is about 2.8 times higher than the rate of non-Aboriginal people. So like I said, injection drug use and it is unprotected sex as well are the main factors in the spread of HIV AIDS among Aboriginal communities. This is something that we have to work um, really hard on and it's really hard to reach this population of injection drug users for trust issues alone. So, Healing Our Nations is trying to get there. <laughs> Between 1998 and 2006, Aboriginal women made up nearly half of all new HIV positive test results. So, 
with average in women and HIV continued various social, economic, economic sorry, and behavioral issues are believed to be influencing this health concern. As with mainstream society, power and balance between Aboriginal women and men is a, hip, is a hindrance in ensuring Aboriginal women have the means and opportunities to protect themselves against HIV. This power and balance also affects efforts to overcome these challenges. Since an Aboriginal community becomes imbalanced when only Aboriginal women are taking measures to heal from historical abuses, such as those that came from the residential schooling. I'm not sure if many people know about the residential schools. Um, just a little quick uh, recap here. It's, um, there's schools in every province. There's only one school in the Maritimes that um, all Aboriginal children from the ages of 4 to 18, they had to go to these schools and they had to live at these schools for years. They were taken from their families, their traditions were lost, their language was lost, but also they were living under the church and they had to practice what we would say the white man's ways. So that would be going to church. Um, they weren't allowed to see their family. If their brothers and sisters were there with them, they weren't allowed to speak to them as all the women or the young girls were on one side and all the boys were on the other. If they were caught seeing their family or anything, they were beaten. And if they were caught speaking their own language, which would be Mi'kmaq within the Atlantic territories, then they would also be beaten as well. After 18, they were sent back into the communities with now not knowing their traditions, their language, or anything like that. So a lot of things have happened. So economic issues facing, facing Aboriginal communities also create greater despair and fewer opportunities. For some Aboriginal women, the sex trade becomes a means of survival as they struggle to provide for children or, maintain a roo or just to maintain a roof over their head as well. With injection drug use according, uh, or sorry, counting for two-thirds of the new HIV infections among Aboriginal populations, Aboriginal women face further challenges. AIDS figures reveals that injection drug use as a risk factor is six times more common among Aboriginal women than their counterparts. So it would be a 35.9% versus their counterparts of only 6.3%. So in 1996, Aboriginal women earned 87.5% of what other women earned. For Aboriginal women, discrimination based on gender is compounded by racism and a long history of oppression that has included forced separation from cultural <coughs> traditions, communities, homes, violence, and sexual abuse, as seen as the residential schools, and a history of alcohol use and a result of discrimination. So finally, it's our hope that Aboriginal women come forth and get the support they need and deserve. And one of the things also that we do at Healing Our Nations is we work closely with youth as well. And uh, we want these youth to go out and get tested, but also we want the youth to not be afraid to talk about sexuality and not to be afraid to check themselves out or to even check out their partners. Don't always listen to what their partners say. And it's not only with youth as well, is that we also do have to target the parents who, because of the effects of residential schools, do not talk about sexuality with their children. So we're trying to work with the youth to talk to their parents, and then the parents also to talk to the youth, and hopefully the message will get out there.